Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Module 2, Organisation of Living Things. This is video number 23 and we're going to just compare some of the transport systems that we've looked at now, particularly those belonging to animals and plants. What we need to do is to compare the structures and function of transport systems in animals and plants, including but not limited to vascular systems in plants and animals. I think the best way to do these sorts of comparisons, and there are several in this module, is to set up a table. So you can see here we've got a comparison of a couple of different organisms in our table, the mammal, the fish, the insect and the plant. And depending on whether or not you've looked much at open or closed systems, you may be able to expand on this table a little bit. But the first thing that we notice is that in mammals, like ourselves, we have a double circuit, a small circuit that goes between the heart and the lungs, and a second that goes between the heart and the rest of the body. So we see some quite significant differences when we look at the structure of the heart and the pumping chambers, the ventricles, and the thickness of those walls, which is a clear indication of which side is pumping the blood to the lungs and which side is pumping the blood to the head and to the rest of the body. The transport fluid for mammals is blood. And we've looked at blood in a separate video, just some of the components of blood. Important too to be having a look at blood slides. And we know that blood is pumped from the heart through the arteries into the body tissues. Capillaries are the exchange surfaces. So that is where exchange is going to occur. So gases are going to move across the membranes. So are glucose, amino acids, all sorts of different important substances which both the cells need and also some of the wastes that the cells have produced in order for them to be put back into the blood and then taken to various places in the body where they will be processed, filtered and removed. In terms of oxygen, if we think about oxygen as a key gas that is going to be needed, we know that that capillary exchange happens in the alveoli or across the alveoli. So that's one of the places where we would find some important gas exchange occurring. And that oxygenated blood is then taken to all of the different body cells. Capillary exchange happens again as the oxygen moves into the individual cells. And so deoxygenated blood is then going to come back via veins to the heart. In fish, we see some similarities, but we also have just a single circuit. Again, fish bleed. And so blood is the transport fluid that fish use to move materials around their body. They are going to pump blood from the heart to the gills. So the gas exchange occurs through those very fine gill lamellae. Oxygenated blood passes directly to the cells through a system of blood vessels, and then the deoxygenated blood comes back to the heart. So a lot of similarities in the method of exchange for fish as there is for mammals, except for that very important double circuit versus a single circuit. In insects, there's an open system. So the other two systems are closed systems. In insects, we have an open system. We have a transport fluid known as hemolymph, and we have dorsal vessels which pump the hemolymph from the heart through the aorta, which opens in the head. The hemolymph flows through all the body cavities and then back to the abdomen, returning to the dorsal vessel. So in this case, we don't have a closed pumping system with tubes that are all completely linked to one another, as we see in mammals. We have an open system where there's some drainage of some of the fluid into the surrounding tissues. Plants too have an open system, and we've talked about the system for plants, and we're talking specifically when we look at transport systems about xylem and phloem. So you could even add over to the side here, xylem and phloem as the name of the actual tubes, as opposed to artery and vein, which are also the tubes. And I guess we can put capillaries in there as well, which are also a tube, albeit a very small one. Xylem transports water from the roots to the leaves via evapotranspiration so that cohesion, adhesion, transpiration, tension, process that is dragging up the water from the roots to the leaves and out through the stomata. 
and then flow and transport sugars in two directions, both up the plant and down towards the roots by the process of translocation, bit of active transport, and also osmotic pressure that's created in the association between the xylem and the phloem and the movement of water between those two transport tubes. Phloem is primarily about moving from source to sink, and we've had a look at that, of course, in a few other areas. And the transport fluid that, that I guess is one of the transport fluids, of course, these two not continuous, moving through two different types of tissue. So the sap, the organic material, is what's moving through the phloem. But we also see a watery fluid, very much a water-based fluid. It's a salty water, I guess, uh, fluid. And that's what's going to be moving through the xylem. So I think these tables are a really good way for you to summarise all the key information that you need when you're comparing transport systems between animals and plants. Thanks for watching.